Okay, so our lesson today, we've got um, piecewise functions, and then on the back, we're going to have step functions. So the piecewise functions has the word piece in it. And when you look at the function here, there's different pieces. See, there's different pieces. So we're going to be graphing pieces of functions, not the whole thing, just pieces of it. The second part after the comma right here, this tells you the domain. That tells you the domain of that particular piece of the function. The domain is what I would input. When I go to graph it, I'm going to have two pieces. I'm going to have a piece to the left, and I'm going to have a piece to the right. It's going to be the left to the right of what number is in the domain. So you look here, and we have x is less than or equal to 1, and x is greater than 1. That is going to be kind of like my border between the two pieces. So what I'm going to do, and you don't have to do, but I think it's very helpful to do, is before I even start, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to put a little dashed line at x equals 1. That way I know that there's going to be a graph of the left of it and a right of that line. This is kind of like a wall, left to the right, and we have two different graphs. And then another thing before we start is these signs, these greater than um, or greater than equal to, stuff like that. If I have a less than or equal to, or I have a greater than or equal to, when I go to graph, I will have a closed Dot. If I have a less than or if I have a greater than, when I go to graph, I will have an open dot. And you'll see where that is in just a moment. Just put that down so we have that handy to refer to. So the first function, the first piece of the function is 2x plus 3. You can either graph it like knowing how to graph 2x plus 3, or we can make a table. But I'm going to go through the table process first because I'm going to use the domain. And with the domain, it says x is less than or equal to 1. That means I can pick 1 or anything less than 1. 0, negative 1, negative 2. So those are the only things on the line of graph is 1 or less. So I kind of like the table. It tells me which numbers I'm allowed to graph. Um, what graph does 2x plus 3 kind of look like? I'm going to graph it with shade. Linear. The line? So I have an idea of what it's going to look like, too, as I'm graphing it. You want to think about that. Um, so 2x plus 3, if I'm going to graph it using slope and y-intercept, I would begin at the y-intercept, 0, 3. 0, 3. And then I would go up 2 over 1. But this is on the left side of this line. So I do not want to go any further. I'm only going to go to the left. So I'm going to go down to that. So that would be using slope and y intercept. Or just plug in numbers. So if I plug in 1, I would get 5. If I plug in negative 1, I would get 1. If I plug in negative 2, I would get negative 1. And then graph those. You can either graph it using 2x plus 3, or you can graph it using a table. That is a straight line, but it stops at the dashed line. Stops at the dashed line. Okay, and then from there we have the other half of this graph, which is uh, negative x plus 4. So we can make a table, or you can use the graph. I'm going to do this one with the table. Um, using my domain, I have to pick numbers that are greater than 1. But I am going to pick 1 in my table. Even though it's just greater than 1, I am going to put 1 in my table. 
but I know it's not going to actually equal 1. So then I'll pick 2, 3, 4. Then I'm going to plug those numbers in. So 1 is going to give me 3, then 2, then 1, then 0. Then I go over to graph 1, 3, but it's not really equal to 1. It doesn't equal 1. It's only greater than 1. So when I go and I graph 1, 3, it has to be an open dot. That's what this part was for. It's an open dot on that line. Okay. Can you explain one more time uh, why it is that you draw that line? Um, this is the separation between the two pieces. You don't have to draw the line, but I think it's easier because the line is the only place that I'm going to have the open dot located. And it just helps me know that that's an open dot when I go to it. Um, because after that, all of these points are part of the domain. All of them are part of the domain. So like 2, 2 is going to be a regular dot, 3, 1, 4, 0. Anything else is, oops, is a full... Um, is fully graphed. It's just that first point on the yellow line is an open dot. So the only reason I put it there is so I know where the two graphs don't overlap. Okay. So the, the graphs will not cross that line. Okay. That line separates graph to graph. So that's why that's why they separate if you don't want them to cross. Right. And it says in the domain that this one's only to the left of two or of, of one, and this one's only to the right of one. And I feel like some of us are visual if we have that here. You don't have to put it there, but if you have it here, I'm, I feel like, oh, no, can't cross that line. Okay. I feel like this helps you. Yeah. So how would you know which one is the open? So you're gonna use this right here. So if it's a if it doesn't have a line under it, that's the open. If it has a line, it's closed. So you just it's just whatever you, you have here, yeah. And do you remember? Yeah, sorry. What if we didn't put the open dot and we just started it to the other? We just started it on two and we didn't do one, three. Okay. Would that be wrong? Yes, because um, greater than one could mean 1.00001. And I can't graph that, right? So what we're doing with the open dot is we're showing that this graph goes all the way to one, but it's not equal to one. Okay. So good questions. Excellent questions, everybody. Let's. Let's do another example. We got two more. Let's do another example and see, see if you pick up on it. Um, this one has uh, a border. So we're going to look at the domain. It has a border at what number? What's that, that up and down line? That vertical line is going to be at 2. So that's going to separate the two graphs. And then my x squared minus 4, I'm only allowed to use numbers that are less than 2. But I am going to put 2 in my table because that's going to be an open dot. So I'm going to put 2 there and then things that are less. 1, 0, negative 1, 2, negative 2. And then you kind of want to think about this. x squared minus 4 is what kind of graph? Quadratic. It's going to be that U shape, that parabola. So as you're graphing, you want to have that in mind. And then if you remember transformations, what does it mean if there's a minus 4? It means down 4. So it's going to be a parabola that just moves down 4. So you could just go graph that if you remember transformations and parent functions. But if not, we just plug in points. It's pretty easy. I gave you pretty easy ones to um, plot. So what is that, zero? And when you go to graph it, you have to pay attention that 2 is an open dot because it's not equal to. So on the line, if it's on the line, that's, what, that's the only time you have to pay attention if it's open or closed dot, if it's on the line. Everything else is closed. So on the line, this one's an open dot, 2, 0. And then we have 1, negative 3, 0, negative 4, negative 1, negative 3, and then 4. And then does my parabola keep going to the left? Or does it just stop here? It keeps going to the left. So maybe I put another number in there. It's uh, 3, 5. Negative 3, 5. You should take that graph off all the way to the edge of your graph. You should take it all the way to the edge. Of your graph. 
All right, and then our other one is square root x minus 1. So you want to think to yourself, first of all, what does a square root function, what's it supposed to look like? It's supposed to look like a... So we have an idea of what it looks like. Um, square root, it's limited what we could plug in. But this also tells us it's got to be 2 or greater. So I'll plug in 2. Should I plug in 3? Why not, Savannah? I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to square root 2, right? So I'm going to plug in stuff that I can square root. If I plug in 5, that'll take away 1, and then it'll square root that, square root 4. Yeah. So I'm going to plug in stuff I can square root. So we'll get 1, 2, 3. And then is this one going to be an open dot or a closed dot? Closed. This one's going to be a closed dot. Uh, two, one. Question, Hayden. Okay. So why is that closed? Why is this one closed and that one's open? Yeah. Um, because of these signs right here. All right. Um, if it is less than, without the line, open. You just have to see which ones are open and closed. I mean, if you want to look right away and say, well, this one's going to be open and this one's going to be closed before I even start, and then when you go to graph it, make sure you coordinate that. That might be helpful. Okay, one more of these. So I'm going to draw my border lines first, those walls. I'm going to draw those first. And I'm saying lines because how many are we going to draw this time? Two. We're going to have one at negative 3 and one at positive 2. We have three functions. We're going to have three pieces. First one is a third x plus 5. And this says it has to be less than negative 3. So even before I start, it says less than. What kind of dot is going to be? That one's going to be open. How about this one that has less than equal to, less than equal to? Why did I write open? Uh, I know how to spell open, I promise. And then greater than two is going to be open. And then I'm going to plug in, so I'm going to plug in negative three. And then I want to make my job easy, so I'm not going to plug in negative four and multiply that by one third. I'm going to plug in stuff that's easily divisible by three. Like negative six, negative nine. Make my job easy. Think ahead and make your job easy. All right, and then when I plug that in, what do I get? Um, negative four, and then three, and then two. value of x, so I know it's going to be a v shape. When I graph it, it's going to make a v. So as I'm plotting things, I kind of want to have that in my head that it's going to make a v. I also might think about my transformations. There's a plus one at the end, so that just tells me the v is just moving up one. I'm going to plot between negative three and two, and it's going to have closed dots. So negative three, plug it in, I get three plus one, four, and negative two is three. One, two, three. Thank you. And so I'm going to put my closed dot at negative three, four, but there's already an open dot there. So you can see color-wise that I'm coloring it in, but you might just be using a um, pencil. It's just going to look like these two totally connect to each other. You won't necessarily be able to tell that they are two different graphs, but that's okay. So it just becomes a closed dot because it's there for one graph, not the other. What you can't have is you can't have two closed dots on top of each other. That would mean it's not a function anymore. If you get two dots on top of each other, it would not be a function. Okay. 
you guys remember that? Um, what's it called? Uh, vertical line test. Do you remember doing that ever? Yeah. You take the vertical line, and if two spots hit, then it's not a function. So here, only one of them hits. One of them's open, one of them's closed. It's okay, it's a function. All right, then the last one is, I'm going to put it up here, x minus 2 quantity squared. And we have to plug in 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 1, 4, 9. That one is an open dot, and it should be a parabola. When you are ready to go on, flip your paper over so I know you're ready to go on. And if you have any questions, let me know. Those are key slides. I know you do, you will use those in couplets. All right, the other side is, um, I don't have this at the very top, I don't know why I didn't make it, but they're called step functions, like pairs of step functions. I have a picture, they're going to look like, have you ever heard of floating stairs? Have you heard of those? Um, they're going to look like floating stairs, kind of, this is sort of cool. Oh, you said you want those? I thought you said you have them. Yeah, so there's like... Not very safe. There's no handles. Or what are the, well, not, what are the things? Like railings. The railings. There's no railings. Not very safe. But. I'm sure they're engineered. You know, here's another picture. Those are so cool. So those are floating stairs. So that's actually what a graph is going to look like. Exactly. So cool. It's going to look so cool, right? <laughs> well, just don't DIY it. <laughs> Have somebody professional do it. Okay, so this function, this, these weird bar things, that is called the greatest integer function, and um, it means whatever's in, inside, you have to take the greatest integer that is either less than or equal to that number. And I'm going to rephrase that. I'm going to say either equal to or less than that number. Okay, so for example, the number negative one is inside. What integer is equal to or less than negative one. Is negative one an integer? Do we know what integers are? <laughs> so integers are the set of numbers that are like the counting numbers, both negative and positive. There's an example of some integers. What do we not have with integers? Decimals, no, fractions. So now let me ask you again, is negative 1 an integer? Yeah. Okay, so we're taking the integer that is either equal to or less than this. And this is an integer, so we're taking that number and that's what it equals. It's negative 1. The next one. It's not absolute value. See how there's like two bars? Mm -hmm. So it means something totally different. It means you're taking the greatest integer less than or equal to that number. So this next one, negative a half, I'm going to make a number line to make this a little bit easier. So there's negative a half. I need to know what integer, wait, negative a half is not an integer, right? Okay, so what integer is less than negative a half? Negative one. Negative one. If you visualize it, it's a little easier to do than try to think about it in your head because I'm sure some of you maybe were thinking it was zero. You don't have to admit it. So the next one, one-tenth. What is less than, what integer is less than one-tenth? Zero. Zero. Uh, 1.5, we're going to think what integer is to the left, what is less than, on the number line, 1.5? One. one. 
Uh, negative 2.1, we're thinking what integer is less than. So on a number line, it would be to the left side of negative 2.1. Negative 3. Negative 3. Well, the negatives get a little confusing. So you want to think on a number line. You guys know what a number line looks like, I hope. There's negative 2.1. What's to the left of it? Negative 3. Okay, and then we're going to graph these. And you saw what they're going to look like. They look like floating stairs. So how you get numbers is you're going to put whatever you want in for the domain. Anything you want in for the domain, you're going to put in. Um, like I could put in zero. We just did zero. Zero is an integer, so that's going to be zero. But if I put in like 0 0.1, that's going to be zero. If I put in 0 0.5, it's also going to be zero. If I put in 0 0.9, it's going to be zero. What if I put in a 0 0.99999? Yeah. It's still going to be zero. When does it change the y value? When I put in one, the next integer, this finally becomes one. That should say. And then at like 1.2, it's still one. Or at 1.5, it's still one. It's not until I do, so here's an integer, here's an integer. It's not until I do the next x integer of 2 does my y change to 2. So you're not like rounding up, you're just going to the left. Yeah. Okay. You're rounding left. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to graph that. I'm going to start at 0, 0, and that's going to be a dot. And then what's going to happen is every single x, until I get to 1, Every single x is also 0 for y. So what we do is we have a constant until we get to 1, 1. So at 1, 1, the graph jumps up to 1, 1. And anytime we have a jump in the graph, you have to end the previous graph with an open dot. So I have a closed dot on the left, and then we have a line, and then at 1, we have an open dot where it jumps up to a closed dot at 1, 1. Then it's going to travel to the left. Okay, it's going to travel to the right until we get to the next integer where it will be an open dot and it'll jump up. And then it's going to do it again. Open dot, jump up. And once you have a few of them, you can just continue the pattern. You'll notice the left side is where all the closed dots are. And then you should have some that go the other way. So I'm just going to continue my pattern just the other way. Do you have a question, Avery? Um, how, how is point one? Are you just making each point one one Yeah, because okay. it's it's not even just point one. It's like point zero zero one and point zero 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 one. Like it's everything. Everything in between here gets graphed. So I just do y. Okay. Does that make sense? You know, like when you graph a normal line and you connect it? I mean, there's points all the way here. I'm just not going to draw every single one. Why would it be an open dot when it's equal to that? It, well, it's, which, which order of pairs? So like, like, um, like, zero, zero, why, why is it? Zero, zero is closed. Why did you draw a line over it? Because I have to go through the x. All of these x's, I have to go through every single x, but they're all zeros. So, like, this is a bunch of dots lined up. And then this open dot, because when I go to when x equals 1, when I go on my graph, and now I'm at x equals 1, that's where x equals 1, does it still equal 0? So, when you end a stair, you have to open dot it. That just shows that it's going all the way up to it, but it's not equal to it. You have to put that open dot. And then the closed dot is right above it. Oh, that one's in the wrong spot. Okay, so I don't feel like you have to fill in the whole graph. Just do some positives and some negatives. That's good. Okay, so just real fast, um, we're not going to 
be able to fill out everything on here, but before you do your homework, I just want to make sure you know how to do it if there's some other number there. It's going to be the same stuff that you did last night. Um, you're going to pick whatever you want for x's. So like you pick 0, you can pick 0 0.5, you can pick 0 0.9, 1, 1 1.2, whatever x's you want. And then with this one, you have to do order of operations. So we're going to do the greatest integer function first, then add 1 to the answer. So with 0, if I put the greatest integer function, it's 0. And I add 1 and I get 1. If I put in 0.5, it becomes 0. Then I add 1 and I get 1. If I put in 0.9, it becomes 0. Then I add 1 and I get 1. If I put in 1, it's 1. I add 1 and I get 2. So that's where it jumps off. If I put in 1.2, that becomes 1. I add 1 and I get 2. So I go to graph that one. I'm going to start at 0, 1. And I'm going to graph all the way until I get to the next integer, which jumps up. And then we're going to jump up. We're going to jump up from there. Um, and you're just going to fill out your pattern. If you remember transformations, this one was transformed up one from the previous one that we just did. Yes, Caleb? Would the numbers? Would what be all numbers? The domain would be all real numbers. I'll write it up there. I'll write it up there. Let me just start. It would be all real integers or all integers. You won't be asked to do domain and range on this homework, so I didn't put it down yet. But we should know what it is. I'll fill those three things up once I uh, pass this out. You just want to make sure that you guys have your. Are they still going to be the same? Like, is it always going to be like this? The basic shape would look the same. Yeah. But that one start, this one is going to be This one. It starts at 0, 1 instead of 0, 0. It's going to be like up one higher than the other one. Hey, um. I'm filling these three things and you can throw them in your notes so you have them. Now, if you need more help, you can go rewatch this video or you can just go to the internet. Like Khan Academy is pretty good. They have really good videos. You look up a video and you get really more explanation. Uh, you can come see me for the period study hall also. Thank you for putting your straight edges back. Have a great day. Please, you got questions.